Hi, and welcome to another episode of 6.5 on the Road, live from CES this time, CES 2025. I'm Olivia Blanchard, Research Director with the Futurum Group, and I'm here with Dipti Vachani, mm -hmm. uh, SVP and GM of the Automotive Business at ARM. Uh, so welcome, thanks Thank for you. doing this. So let's jump right in, because I have like five big questions to, okay. uh, to ask you. So um, ARM is best known for its pervasiveness in the smartphone market mm -hmm. and its growth in data centers, right? Um, but how does ARM work with partners in the automotive industry, uh, number one? And how pervasive is ARM architecture in today's cars? Well, uh, I'll start with the second part of the question. Ni there are 94% of global vehicles today use ARM technology. So, um, yes, we are incredibly pervasive. We've been in this industry for over 30 years. It is one of the pillars of growth for the company. And uh, as you can imagine, with electrification, more autonomy, uh, more user experience, the number of components and silicon going into cars is only going up. And so this market is a huge potential uh, for ARM and for our entire ecosystem. Right. So speaking of that, uh, and by the way, that number is just really crazy. It uh, is crazy, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of people probably don't realize that. They and when I first that. heard it, um, I thought, is that possible? And then, yeah, it actually makes sense. It is. Well, I mean, I, 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 another way to say it, I'd be hard pressed to find a car that doesn't have ARM in it. Correct. So, yep. and I've, I've looked around, but it, it's, it's, a, it's amazing that we, our ecosystem that we've created um, is, is so relevant for what we're trying to do in vehicles as well with AI and user experience, all of the same kind of basic elements that we need yeah. elsewhere as well in the industry. Yeah, so you're, you're kind of uniquely placed then, since you're pretty much everywhere, mm -hmm. uh, to, to talk to me a little bit about some of the trends that you're seeing at CES in the automotive segment. Um, and also to kind of like give me some insight into which ones we'll continue to see a lot more in 2025. Yeah, so there's, the automotive industry has some three major trends that we're seeing. One, electrification, and, mm -hmm. and of course we know, we know about that. Autonomy. And this isn't about fully autonomous vehicles necessarily, but it's just more and more autonomy in the car, right? And then, like I said, the user experience. Just we're redefining what the user experience in the car is, what your UI looks like. How do you, how do you, uh, not only the safety, but how do you entertain in, mm -hmm. in the vehicle? So those are the three major trends, and they're kind of all interdependent, and they have some some common elements to it. And one of them is low power. Right, mm -hmm. it just matters whether it's electrification or a gas vehicle. Low power matters, and it matters more than ever now with silicon because the amount of silicon content in the car going up, and with our history in uh, mobile, where low power is fundamentally how we think. I always talk about you know creating something that's low power starts with the culture of the company. It starts mm -hmm. with the basis of every decision you make in the design. Is it is power what you think about and maximizing the performance, of course. And so low power um, and our history in low power really uh, helps us in that, in, in that space. Um, heterogeneous compute, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's GPUs, CPUs, right? It's all the technologies that we think about. It's cameras, it's a UI v screen, AI. It's, it's across the board of the vehicle. And more and more software that's required for our AI. And where there is AI, there's ARM. Mm -hmm. ARM is everywhere where there's an AI technology. And so all of these things are creating a very complex environment for our customers to navigate. Right. right? Where there's AI, there's ARM. <laughs> right, do you like that? that? Yeah. I do like that, actually, yeah. Um, and it's factual. Okay, so kind of following up on that, um, so you're, you're working with, with every major auto OEM, um, and you're, you're deeply ingrained in all the technologies that go into the vehicles. Um, I guess the my, my next question is regarding roadmaps, and mm -hmm. especially with how long it takes to actually develop vehicles mm -hmm. and software-defined vehicles specifically. Um, when you're looking at the roadmap of, of all of these automakers, what, what do you see uh, in terms of, of what's coming, some of the technologies that they're particularly interested in or the ones that they're really focusing on in terms of, of uh, getting in them vehicles and also sort of creating differentiation as mm -hmm. well uh, and value for, for users and consumers? Well, it's, it's interesting. So it it has started, when I talk to OEMs, there, there are kind of three major things that I, common trends that I see that they're worried about. And um, one of them is uh, I want to control the speed of my innovation. I, I, the competition is fierce. 
It's a level of competition that this industry hasn't seen in a long time, mm -hmm. right? We have new income uh, incoming into the into this market, and so I need to control the speed of my innovation. Number two, I need to control the user experience, right? And so because there's so many of this um, vertically integrated solutions, whose experience is it, really? Is it? Is it? Is it a Mercedes experience? Is it a uh, Volkswagen experience? Whose experience is it? And you see these companies, and we work very closely with Mercedes, to really control the experience in the vehicle, right? Um, and then they're saying scalability. I have all this software, all this autonomy, all this AI. I can't make it bespoke for every vehicle I have, right? I saw this comparison once with Apple and, and the iPhone and how many models they have versus how many models, let's say, a Volkswagen has. It's, it's, it, it's a completely different world of scale that they have to think about it, unique models to, to have to write software for. So they have to have scalable solutions. And that's why they work with us because our ecosystem enables them to control over their software, control over their, of, of their um, speed of innovation because now it's not a vertically integrated solution. They can right. now start to piecemeal some of that, the, the solutions together to really create that unique experience that is that OEM's unique experience. And so I think what you'll see, what we'll see in their roadmaps is them in starting to, to lean in and start to take more control over that speed of innovation, speed of, um, and, and control over their software, right? right. Um, we've heard a lot of talk about whether they're making their own silicon or who's making their own silicon. It's really about software. Yeah. It really is, can, how, how much can I control my experience? And that's the software side of things. And so that's, that's where ARM's ecosystem of 20 million developers really helps, uh, helps uh, the OEMs innovate. Right. So you have this, this baseline of, of consistency and predictability mm -hmm. that they can build on, and then on top of that, they can build the customizations. Right. So you have that right. flexibility. Right. So um, and, and one of the questions you asked earlier, I, I wanted to add to that. Um, what we create is this technology that's across our entire ecosystem. And then for automotive, we make it very specific to the safety and security that's mm -hmm. required. So they get to leverage all of the goodness that is our ecosystem, but while still um, getting the safety and security, because that's a compromise not, n not anyone's willing to make, and we don't want them to make, right? Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. So actually, you <laughs> started answering my next question. <laughs> so that's good. No, it's, it's good. So well, we, we wanted it, a conversation. <laughs> it'll, it'll be shorter. Um, so, you know, talking again about software-defined vehicles, and it, it's something that, that I struggle with a little bit when I talk about the automotive industry uh, with journalists, with, with pretty much everybody else, they always want to talk about EVs. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily understand that there's sort of like a parallel or overlapping track of software-defined vehicles. Mm -hmm. And really, the, the for me, the big opportunity or the more interesting opportunity is the software-defined vehicle part of it, not necessarily just the drivetrain, right? Mm -hmm. um, so having talked about all the things that we talked about already, the the sort of you know baseline predictability platform that you can customize on, the you know if 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 it's AI, it's ARM, uh, all of these things, uh, and the security now. What's um, what are you seeing in in terms of the future that ARM plays, or the role that ARM plays in the future of, of automotive design and automotive experiences? Wow, well, that's a um Let's go back to, let's talk about software-defined vehicles, yeah. and then I'll, I'll, I'll lead to that. Um, I, have a, I have a keynote that I did, which was uh, software-defined vehicles as survival for the OEMs. And I truly believe it is survival. Um, because the amount of software is exploding that, that mm -hmm. is in the car, um, just to get it perfect and get it right and get it exact before that car leaves, it, it's just not possible anymore. Right, and and you'd be uh, the 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 amount of R and D required to go do that. So you need to have an environment in which you can load new software, new, load new capabilities into that car, and and that's why the capability of software-defined vehicle. And again, even and the 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 user is also comfortable with that, right? We're getting used to this element of our car being uploaded and updated as as time goes by, and so. I think software-defined vehicles um, is here to stay, and, and, and we are seeing a trend um, to most OEMs uh, transitioning to that. Then, um, how does ARM play in that? Well, um, we've got the luxury of having the technology that's in the cloud, 
So mm -hmm. our V9 technology, you may have seen announcements with Amazon. Yeah. You've seen announcements with NVIDIA and, and the technology they use in the, in the, in the data center. Um, that's all ARM-based, right? Um, the car, 94% of cars use ARM technology today, so that's ARM-based. Now you have this software parity between the cloud, mm -hmm. ISA, we call it ISA parity between the cloud and the car. And the ability to reach software in the cloud that we know can be deployed in the car in a reliable, safe way is what we've created with our software-defined vehicle technology and, and an initiative, what we released a, a few years back called SOFI. And that initiative works across the industry to, to solidify that environment from the data center to the cloud and make a reliable environment for two reasons. One, for software defined vehicles, but also a virtual platform so you can start writing that software before the vehicle's ever seen the light of day or even the IP's seen the light of day. Right. Again, because we need to shift left that software development, all enabling the OEMs to control their speed of innovation, which is what we're, they're very concerned about. Right. So there's also the, the training and, and yes. yeah. There's a big element of that that needs to start early. Correct. Right. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So what are some of the recent innovations, um, I think, that, that best highlights ARM's value and role in the automotive industry? Some, some of the innovations that, that kind of jump out at you or that people should you know, either focus on, they might already be aware of them, but also there might be some things that, that they're missing uh, that you might want to highlight. What are those? Wow, there's, uh, there's quite a bit. But, um, one of the, the technologies, one of the capabilities that uh, on our latest uh, architecture release, which is a V9 architecture, um, has uh, the ability to have um, isolated workloads. So we're able to create containers in which these workloads are completely isolated, okay. and that's in our architecture. Kind of tech talk, but what does that translate to? That translates to being able to create um, workloads that, that are mixed critical, meaning something that's really highly safe while right. it's driving your car. And so we isolate these workloads and we really create these combined containers where we can create an environment of mixed criticality, right? And that gives that software development the safety and the reliability that we need where we need it and the flexibility where we may not need it as much, right? Um, also, this ecosystem of software. You're not going to get all that software from one place necessarily. So having this in the architecture enables you to isolate those workloads and such that you can have one vendor in one container and another vendor in another. And so there's these really <clears throat> the kind of fundamental architectural decisions we make that enables the industry to, to, to build on top of and innovate on top of right. and their base capabilities, but that um, and the, the usage of that expands now you may be able to integrate what is an in-vehicle entertainment with an ADAS capability all, right. all into one piece of solution, one silicon, because those lines are getting blurry as well. And so um, lots of innovation happening at the architectural level that, that helps the industry start to see these capabilities to light. Um, AI acceleration, right, that's, it's, you know, it, oftentimes we think of AI as maybe a neural network and that's the acceleration that's happening, but it's actually, there's a lot of data processing that needs to happen. And so our CPUs sit right alongside these accelerators and, and, and we create low power technology and as well as AI acceleration to go with it. Um, the other thing is it's not all just about CPU compute, it's heterogeneous compute, yeah. which means there's cameras, there's a screen. And so, so all of these things play right in, in uh, uh, all these innovations at ARM play right into the hands of what automakers need today. Yeah, um, and multimodal AI and performance per watt in a vehicle. I didn't right? get yeah. to that just yet, or yeah. Gen AI, right? Yeah. I mean, there's 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 a lot of really cool innovations that are happening in those areas. Uh, multimodal is, is is it's a car. Yeah, it's multimodal by definition, right? Yeah. Um, and then also, uh, and and the the fact that Gen AI makes learning maybe innovation in how we learn. Do we need all the cars on the road to, to gather data? Can we generate that data through some AI technique? Right. So lots of really, really neat things to see. And, and what's amazing, having been in the industry, I think, as long as, as you and I have, um, often the car is the last place the innovation, you see the innovation. Yes. We're now right. seeing it first, yeah. right? We're seeing it first or almost first, and that's a great time to be on the market. 
Yeah, it is. Um, so are there any particular announcements uh, at this year's CES that, that you want to highlight or that kind of jump out that, that you want to talk to me about? Yeah, absolutely. So um, saw, if you saw Jensen's keynote, mm -hmm. um, that is ARM and NVIDIA. Thor is ARM-based. Really, really excited about our partnership um, um, with NVIDIA as well as we announced a multi-year partnership with Aston Martin. And nice. that um, is very exciting for us in the automotive space, as you can think of. A, I mean, the race car is the epitome yeah. of the most advanced car on the road. And so we're working very closely with them on technology across the board and, uh, and their racing, as well as uh, some of their DE&I &I, &I initiatives. Um, one thing I noticed uh, having gone to some of these races is so few females yep. that are in that space and pretty analogous to what I experience on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And so a partnership with them to help um, combine our forces and improve the, the environment for both racing and for technology. Excellent. That's cool. It is really cool. Yeah. I'm really excited. So bonus question, what are you most excited about in the next two, three years? Not even just this year, but just like looking forward at, at the automotive industry in, in particular. We often say that uh, um, we're saving lives, and it kind of seems like motherhood and apple pie, but it really is. We, you know, you see stuff happening, and you see like um, whether it's uh, you know the amount of deaths that we have, see with vehicles, which just errors, and and uh, and the fact that these ADAX capabilities are, and it's not necessarily about fully autonomous vehicles, but the capability to check if someone's falling asleep while they're driving. Right. Yeah. Um, or someone is inebriated while they're driving, whether it's a camera on your face to be able to say, I'm going to slave pull over until you're ready mm -hmm. to drive again. These things, um, they're not the cool, sexy things that everyone talks about, but they're truly going to change. Yeah. You know, getting another person home safely. Right. I, I think they're pretty sexy. Uh, no, no, <laughs> Thank they're you. cool. I, mean, I do I, think they are too, but yeah. you know, people often talk about, hey, I can talk to my car. Well, yeah, that's cool. And I do think that's cool, but uh, I think what we're seeing right now is is really going to reduce the amount of tragedies right. we see on the road. Well, I, I, I'm a cyclist, and I also ride motorcycles, so I'm very vulnerable yes, on the road. And are. so for me, this particular focus is probably the most important of, mm -hmm. of all the, the features of software-defined vehicles. So we're, yeah. we're very much aligned there. Um, Dipti, thank you so much thank for taking the time me. to, uh, to speak down. with me. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so we're six five on the road at CES. I'm Olivia Blanchard, your host today. Uh, we hope that you watch other videos. Make sure that you follow us, click on all the things, and we'll see you soon at an event near or far away from you.